your journey can only begin when the self-doubts stop. The first step is harnessing your bravery within. Believing in you is your host, John D. Wallace. day to you all. My name is Sean and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another Persevering as an Introvert episode on Bravery Within. Thanks so much for tuning in. You guys are amazing. I love talking with you guys. You're making the podcast even bigger and bigger. Can't say thank you enough for that. Uh, continue to share with everybody, uh, making everything so much better. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page. That is where, well, the easiest way of actually figuring out all five series. <laughs> There's, it's perfectly organized in there. You can find everything, you know, on, on all platforms, you know, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of those there. You can find them there. We're pretty much any place that you listen to podcasts. It's there, <laughs> but uh, the easiest way to find anything is on my YouTube page because it's all organized by series. So hopefully there's something in there that you like, but I just wanted to say thank you so very much for tuning into my podcast. You guys are amazing. So today what I wanted to do was talk about something. I've had some folks ask me about it um, since I talk about being an introvert and things there, and they, they're asking all kinds of different questions about being basically overly sensitive. They, they're afraid that there's something wrong with them. They pick up on things that most people you know, don't. It's kind of overwhelming. And so what I wanted to do was take today's episode and, and just talk about all that stuff. So episode 14 is called Highly Sensitive Introverts. Now, I, I, I changed it to introverts. Now, there is highly sensitive people hsps is, is, is what it's abbreviated to and i know that sounds kind of funny but hang in there. there there's a reason for all this and introverts can be very very sensitive and and like me uh it's it, it can be so overwhelming not gonna lie i mean it, it the sometimes the simplest of things e even the lights in my office can, can bother you i mean or somebody laughing down the hall can be just overwhelming and people go well that doesn't seem right Contrary to popular disbelief, <laughs> introverts are already naturally sensitive. And then if you take and you ratchet that up about 100%, that's where you're starting to get into the into the level of highly sensitive introverts. And there's no, I, I mean, I've been, you know, basically, it took me years to figure out what an introvert was. Then it took me a little bit longer to figure out, hey, I am an introvert. And then it took even longer to figure out what is an introvert. <laughs> So what I wanted to do was kind of share with you some of the things that I have went through. Because um, not only being a highly sensitive person, I'm also, also an empath. I can feel people's emotions. And I know there's going to be people out there right there they are going to turn off the episode. And that's fine. I mean, all I'm going to try to do is just try to give you some information today of everything that I know that, that you know, basically revolves <laughs> what I've gone through, what I've learned the hard way, the school of hard knocks. And, and just try to help you guys out a little bit because I know if you're anything like me, when I first found out that I was an introvert and, and started to do some research on what did that mean? I, I mean, let's be honest. I didn't know the difference between an introvert and an extrovert. And then you got ambiverts out there, which I kind of fall in that one too because I have extrovert traits because I can talk to people. I can stand in front of people because I wanted to be a teacher. So I do have extrovert qualities and that's where an ambivert comes in because you float between an extrovert and an introvert. Um, so I, I basically have qualities of both, but when you break it down, I, I am much more of an introvert. And then when you start uh, basically adding on the sensitivity of being able to feel emotions, I'm sure there's been times that you've walked into a room and you were probably happy, you were going in, you're happy to see some folks, and all of a sudden you get this overwhelming feel of dread or unhappiness or anger, anything like that there. Um, most of the time it's the negative feelings that you pick up on even faster because they're typically stronger emotions. And you, all of a sudden you feel your personality change, you, you feel your mood change just right on a dime. And you don't know where it's coming from. Well, when you're highly sensitive like what we are, you pick up on that stuff and you don't even know you do. That, that's the part that really confused me probably the most when I, I started learning about this stuff is it is overwhelming. It's kind of... 
I guess for a lack of better words, it's like standing in the middle of a rock concert in front of those monster, monster, monster uh, speakers that are up on the stage. And you have all that blaring. You have all these people around you. They're all screaming, bouncing around, holding their hands up. You got the singers singing, the music going. Really, and, and for us, that could be the same thing as, you know, if we were to walk into a room with two other people, sometimes it's overwhelming like that. And, and I have to admit, it. I'm, when I first started learning about this, before I even knew anything about it, I really thought there was something wrong with me. I thought, whoa, okay, I must have been a Friday afternoon special when they were putting the parts on me and programming me because this, this they did something wrong. I, I need to go back and get a you know an upgrade. I need to get reprogrammed or something. And it took a long time to figure out that I was highly sensitive. And I know there's a lot of people out there like that. Um, my son is extremely, I mean, he's even more sensitive than I am. He's, he's incredible. And, and we use that to help people because uh, we can see things that most people can't. You can feel things. Um, it, it gets to be overwhelming. But the problem is most people, you know, they'll start looking and they go, well, something's wrong with you. You're kind of kind of weird. You're, you're different, you know. And, and you name it, I've been called it under the sun. It's no big deal to me anymore. Uh, I've been walking down the road of life long enough to understand that go ahead and say what you want to say. It's no big deal. It's not going to bother me any. But if you need to get that out of your system, then go ahead. But anything that basically when you start saying, ooh, you're sensitive, um, it's kind of like a bad thing. And then if you're a man on top of that all, because we're not allowed to talk about our feelings or emotions, we're to keep it all locked up. We're supposed to be these pillars that nothing ever affects us. And then, then you add on trying to be that way, trying to basically, that's what the world thinks of men. And that's what's basically programmed into us. And, and we're not supposed to feel emotions. We're not supposed to talk about it. And then you add on top of it, being highly sensitive where I can sense every person in the room. I mean, I can sense them from a distance. And you get this information automatically, whether you want it or not, you get it. I, and that's the, that's the part that I couldn't figure out. I thought maybe I was doing something. First, I thought I was programmed wrong. And then, then to come to find out that I get this information whether I want it or not, it, it, it's, it's too much. There is so many times that especially if, you know, like when I was in meetings, I hate meetings. I just dread meetings, mainly because you have all of these people, you have all of these emotions, you have all these ideas all flowing in there. And you're typically in a crowded room that's closed off with no air of movement. I just go right into a panic attack is, is where I start. And I know there's a lot of people that are like that. And you're probably, you know, if you're understanding where I'm coming from, you're probably shaking your head yes, going, yes, Sean, we understand. We understand where you're coming from. And what I wanted to do today was just basically, I'm hoping to lay aside some misconceptions, kind of clear them up and, and to let you know, there's nothing wrong with you. This is just the way we're made. And, and let me tell you, it's taken probably 15 years for me to figure this out, to go down the road. I mean, I, I started noticing that there was something different about me um, at basically at age seven. And it didn't really kick in to high gear until I was about 15. And what I realized at that point is it, it started driving me nuts because you can, it's not that you can hear people think, but you can feel what they're thinking. And I know that sounds funny to people that don't understand or have never gone through this, but it's true. I mean, you literally can feel what they're feeling at the time. And if I have a, a, a real deep connection where you're, you're somebody that's super, super personal to me, I can feel you from hundreds of miles away. I know when something's bothering you or when you're happy, you're sad, you're down, you're angry, you're discouraged, you're what, whatever it is, I pick up on it. And there's so many times that I can be cruising through the day, had a good day, had a great meal, got to talk to my son or my friends or go do something fun or I was up in the hills and just enjoying the beauty of nature. And then all of a sudden I'm just instantly depressed and I have no idea why. I have no idea where it come from and it drives me nuts. And it's like, okay, well, somebody that I care about apparently is having a tough day. They're having a rough day, whatever it is. They're just something, something's not right. So then most of the time, then I get back into cell range and then I start asking people, are you okay? Is something bothering you? Because I can't tell exactly from that kind of distance who it is. 
Um, if I'm in the same room, then I can tell you who it is. It's no problem. But when you're, you know, tens, twenties, hundreds of miles away, it's a little bit harder to figure out who it is. Now, I know there's other people out there that probably can do it. Um, I'm just not that good at it. But being highly sensitive really takes, you know, it, people look at it kind of like, oh, something's wrong with you, as if it's a bad thing. And it gets kind of a bad rap. And and, and don't let anybody tell you. I mean, it's it's not. It's just you have to learn how to process because you get to, we we basically as you go through life we're picking up all on all the vibrations of life we're picking up on the light the energy the sounds the smells the taste all of that stuff is coming into us and our brains are processing it and it gets to be it is just like whoa wait a minute it's almost like a flood is constantly hitting you like you're out in the middle of an ocean and the waves keep crashing into you and you feel like you're going to drown that's what the emotions feel like they feel like they're overtaking you they feel like they're overwhelming you and, and it gets to be too much and it's like you just you just need a breather you you need to be on a boat where it can't get to you anymore so you can take and breathe a little bit because it's so easy to get overwhelmed and <sighs> And then people will, will cross the line and say, well, you're, you know, you dry, you cry at a drop of a hat. I've heard that and stuff there many, many times. Now, for us watching, you know, a sad movie or, uh, you know, uh, some people get really, really bothered by the gory horror movies. Um, there's been times where I can watch TV and I know it sounds funny, but somebody dies in there, some big character or they're, you know, they're important to other passes away in the show and I got tears in my eyes because it's overwhelming and that's that's what happens when you're highly sensitive you don't you don't always want to be that way it's not like you know you go out of your way to be this sensitive the problem is all that information comes into you whether you want it or not and it gets to be so overwhelming it's so much because basically highly sensitive people can process things very deeply and and they see patterns and they see connections out in the world that a lot of others can't see. And when you start processing those things, it, 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 it takes a lot out of you. We, our, our, our batteries already drain so fast as is. But then you add on top of it being sensitive where you have literally all this information. It's kind of like being on the super highway on the internet and all that data is coming through those fiber optic lines. That's really what's running through our minds and that's what's running through our heads, our bodies. I mean, literally, I've gotten to a point where I, there's been so much stuff, information coming into you. My body hurts. I literally have pain running through my body because it gets to be so much because I, I so basically highly sensitive. Um, and it gets to be too much. I, you know, I, I keep saying that over and over again, but the problem is it's the truth. I don't know how else to say it. It's overwhelming. It gets to be, it's just like, holy smokes. What is, I, I need a break. Somebody just back off for a minute and, and give me a second to think because, you know, it, we get overwhelmed and overstimulated because the brain is processing all of that information. And it's like, holy cow, okay, where do I where do I go from here? I just need a break. So what, some of the things, you know, I'll step away for a while. Sometimes if I can step out of the room and go outside and walk around for a little bit and let the wind hit me or the, you know, the sun or hopefully in my favorite days of foggy and cloudy and snowy, those are my favorite days. Those are the days that I, I, I relax the most is you know it's foggy and the snow's lightly coming down and you know and everything else i mean i honestly i probably <laughs> with johnny depp the movie sleepy hollow the way that town is where it's always dark and gloomy oh man i, I could live there every day of the, of the year i would absolutely love it I, I love that little town it's fantastic in that movie but when i have to step away at times because it gets to be too much especially after a meeting or a get together or a training seminar or just anything like that even even something simple is i typically will try to go to the grocery store at six or seven in the morning so there's not that many people but even being in a big store in a grocery store or something like that there can be overwhelming it can be too much i mean you've got all the colors you got the smells you got the sounds you know you've got the people rustling around you got the carts running into things you got people stocking shelves it, it gets to be such an overwhelming amount of information that is flooding into your mind. It's just like, wow, okay. And trying to figure out how to basically sort through all that data, all that information, it, it, 
it, it's very, very draining. It, it, it's a lot and it takes time. I, I mean, I'm still learning. I do pretty well at it now. I, I've learned how to close my mind off. It took some time and I read some books and I, I started learning how to shut my mind off to all that information. I can't fully shut it off. I can't block it all out. I've tried. Um, and I've tried the exercises where I've read books where they tell you to, you know, you got the mind's eye, the third eye and everything else. And that's where a lot of, you know, the information from the outside world comes into you. Um, and I try, I do my best to keep it closed, especially when I'm out in public, because you have all those emotions from all those people. And it's like, wow, okay, this is just way too much. But a lot of the time after I go to the store and stuff, when I come home, I'll typically just sit on the deck after I get everything put away and just enjoy the birds and just smell the grass growing. Or if I'm lucky enough, I can sit out on the deck and I've got a covered awning and I can listen to it rain or I can watch it snow. Just anything just nice and relaxing and it allows you to disconnect for a little bit and quit absorbing all that data. And it's taken some time to figure out how to do that. Um, it didn't happen overnight by any way, shape, or form. Let me tell you that and let me make that very clear. And no matter what, you can't shut that information off from coming in, but you can streamline it. And it, it's taken time of working with my mind and saying, okay, this is only the information that's allowed to come in. This is the amount that comes in. It doesn't always work. I, I gotta be honest, I can't always do that. And it doesn't, you know, you know it works probably 60, 70% of the time. It's about all I've been able to to get it and basically shut down the information coming in and then if you're out and about with people there i can only do it for so long i mean most of us introverts are that way anyway there's only so much you know social battery <laughs> that we've got and when it's out it's out it's like i'm done okay time to check out hit the time clock ching and out you go um so picking up on emotional cues like empaths can and feeling the deep 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 feelings that we feel uh, makes you a highly sensitive person or a highly sensitive introvert. However, whatever way you want to say that one, because both terms work. Um, notice, because we notice all the small things that most people overlook. I mean, it could be something as, you know, something as simple as, you know, a flower can overwhelm us because of the smells and the colors. And, and I know it sounds funny, but when you're taking in all this information, um, from outside it, it gets to be a lot and there's nothing wrong with that it takes time to figure out how to process all that stuff how to block it out to the best of your abilities it doesn't happen right away and like I said I've been learning about introvert stuff for probably 20 years now and I've been you know and I really dove into it after my divorce which I've been divorced now for I think 13 years um, I really got into it because I wanted to learn who I was anyway. I had to basically reinvent myself and find out who I was after the divorce. And this is, this is just the way, that, the way that I did it. But don't let people tell you any different. Highly sensitive introverts, it's a real thing. And, and, there's, a, and there's a lot more of us than, than what you think. And, and I know that you know we, we keep to ourselves. We, we hide in the houses or for like me, I like hiding up in the hills away from people because connecting with... Um, nature is a huge thing for me it, it helps me recharge nature is wonderful um, but some of the misconceptions that people have about us that I was trying to figure out what some of them are um, and one of the biggest things is is they always say well you're you know you you're, you're awkward in public it's and it's like no I, I mean okay yeah sometimes we are <laughs> I can't deny it um, but for the most part we're not mainly because we just we prefer to stay to ourselves um, we hate being put on the spot when like people ask us questions because sometimes we can't come up, we can't articulate the correct words when we're out in public because it, it, you have all this information coming in you and we have our wonderful extrovert friends and family that are pushing us, oh, go out there and dance or go out and talk to somebody or go wh wh wherever you're at, you know, uh, go play some more pool or darts or wh whatever it is. You know, they're always pushing you to get out there. And for us, that is that is like terrifying because we know what we're up against and we know how how rough it is to try to get through that. So yeah, I suppose, and sometimes we're a little awkward, but for the most part, I would say no. It's just because it's just, it's all overwhelming. Um, we don't like social situations anyway. We don't like being out with groups of people. And then you dump us into that and then you, you know, and if we know that we can feel everything and then that just makes it worse. Um, we've been, sometimes we've been told that we don't like talking. 
I, I, I couldn't tell you how many times through my life that we don't that I don't like to talk. Well, when I'm out and about at work, I do I, I talk with anybody. It doesn't matter to me now. Um, I'm really, really good at ducking questions when they ask me questions and stuff there about you know about my personal life. I'll find a way. I've got answers for virtually everything. Um, and I can duck out a question. So they really don't get to know me. They think they know me, but I, I can turn the questions around. So that way it basically bounces off me and goes back to them. But they, a lot of people think we don't like to talk. We do in small groups and people we feel comfortable with. Oh my goodness, we'll talk your ear off. We'll tell all kinds of jokes. It's fantastic. Um, but we do like to talk. We just, we're just real careful on who we talk to. Uh, because basically it's very easy when, you know, we love our extrovert friends and family. Don't get me wrong. We love them to death. But they can sometimes be pushy and jump in when you're trying to describe something or talk. They'll jump in. They don't realize they're doing it because they just want to be part of the conversation. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's been many times that I'll have people walk on me. And the moment you start walking on me when I'm in the middle of a conversation with somebody, I'm done. I, I'm done talking. I won't, no matter what you do. Unless you ask me a question, I'm not jumping in anymore because you, you basically mowed me over. I'm not, I, fine, if you want center attention, then go right on ahead. doesn't matter to me now because it's less that I have to tell people about me and, and I'm happy about that. So, um, but we do like talking. It, it's a common misconception that we don't like to talk. Well, actually we kind of do. So um, another thing that um, basically, even though I'm a guy, this has been said to me by other guys is that, you know, I'm too sensitive or over dramatic. And I'm not anywhere near close to either one of those things. If I say something, there's normally a pretty good reason why um, what's going on. And, but if you want to call me over dramatic because I show a little bit of emotion from time to time, that's fine. Uh, because I know as guys, we're raised to say, nope, we, we shut everything off. This is who we are. We don't talk about anything. We lock it all up. So the moment that you do talk a little bit about feelings or sensitivity, oh yeah, you get made fun of just boom right there. But for the most part for the for the lady introverts out there and stuff they i know you get called over dramatic sensitive um sometimes you've been called i've heard some of my friends being called crybabies it's not true because when you feel as deeply as what we do you f i mean uh, something simple as <sighs> let's be honest um when, when a pet a dog dies in a movie oh my god i lose it i just like no i can watch a hundred humans <laughs> die it's fine but you you lose one puppy and it's like, oh, the world ended, just shoot me, I'm gonna go downtown and just hang me on some, you know, anything. Just, just I'm done, I, I can't do it. And so there are times that, you know, I can be too sensitive. Um, so I have to be careful of what I watch. That's probably why I don't get into romantic movies <laughs> or anything like that. I gotta stay with it. For me, horror doesn't bother me. I, I have no problem that I love horror movies um, or I love good action movies or anything like that there. But you know, being a man and you have all this sensitivity, oh man, it, it's tough. It, it is a tough road to walk. Um, trying to you know, keep everything basically bottled up, but you feel all these things. It, it's, it's just like, okay, I, I want to say these things and I want to, it, it's just hard. Just, just trust me on this one. Lady introverts, you guys have got it made because you can talk about your feelings. You can you can let it out. You can you know all this stuff here. You you have it amazingly easy compared to what we have, and I so envy you for that one there. But until the social norms of basically <laughs> our world changes, men are just going to have to keep things locked up, which makes it tough. So when you're highly sensitive like I am. Holy cow, that makes that makes everything so very difficult because you still like there's social protocols that you have to follow. You know, you say please, thank you and hold the door open for a lady or a man. Doesn't matter, you just hold the door open and 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 be human. You know, help somebody out a little bit or get something off the shelf for them or, you know, whatever it is, help them across the street. I've done that before. I've helped people across the parking lot when we have icy days or they drop something, you tell them that and you pick it up for them. There's just social protocols about being nice. And that's that's what you do. And until the social protocols change for men where we're allowed to express emotion a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying that I, I want to fall on the ground and have a big old crying fit not in any way shape or form but you know i don't also want to be ostracized if i bring up and say you know what that that really bothered me that's that that hurt a little bit if you say that in public you're going to get ridiculed as a man that's just just the way it is so you have to keep it all locked up um 
so what I wanted to do is I was trying to figure out, you know, some of the some of the things, some of the telltale signs essentially, um, to see if you're a highly sensitive person. And so I sat down and I tried to figure out some things that um, basically either bother me or what define me because like I said I didn't know what an introvert was and then to go through and try to figure that out figure out who you are and then to find out that you're you know highly sensitive and then to find out you're an empath where you're taking in all of these feelings and these emotions and everything else it was just like okay I have no idea how to process all this I don't know how I'm supposed to act I know as a man I should just shut my face go to work don't talk about my feelings don't acknowledge them pretend you don't have them be the rock for everybody and never show any weaknesses that's that's all I know is what a man's supposed to be and then you add all of this stuff on top of it it's like whoo okay now we're now what do I do how do I learn how do how do how do I do all this stuff it just gets to be just too much after a while so I, I sat down and I try to try to figure out some things that 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 I do because I am a highly sensitive introvert and because I wanted to see if some of these things match up for you guys and, and to say you're not alone out there there's plenty of us that you know because they I think the current rumor about things is, is like 60 60 percent of the population is introverted we there's actually more introverts than there is extroverts but extroverts are so amazing and so uh, vibrant and energetic and everything else it seems like there's more of them <laughs> which is fine we need you guys to balance us out I'm not arguing that point I'm glad we have extroverts in the world because it'd be almost I think it'd probably be too quiet <laughs> if it was just us introverts I mean if you come down to, I could be wrong I don't know but to me, it would probably be almost too quiet, you know, because we wouldn't have some of the music and we wouldn't have some of the artists and the, you know, I mean, granted, yes, introverts are, you know, typically better at music and, in, you know, art and, you know, creative things because we're always stuck in our heads. We're always, you know, basically thinking uh, we, we want everything to death. We just it's just the way we are. I, I mean, we were what ifs we're overthinkers. And we have typically very, very vibrant imaginations. We we have no problems with living in our own heads. And it's like a whole different world up there. I mean, to us, it's wonderful because it's bright and colorful and, and energetic. And it's everything that we wanted to do. And it may be something as simple as there's times where when I, when I meditate, I just imagine myself up in the middle of the forest, surrounded by trees. There's not a person, not a house, not a light pole, not anything near me. And I can hear the animals walking around. I can smell the pine trees, you know, and I hear the, you know, the pine cones dropping and, and you see the clouds, the bright fluffy clouds going over. And then there's times where I sit and everything's foggy because it allows me to basically to settle down. Foggy days allow me to basically just kind of breathe. And I know it sounds kind of funny because a lot of people get really, really depressed with fog and cloudy days. But for me, it allows me to basically shut my mind down and, and slow down. And that's that's why I think I probably like foggy and snowy and rainy days is because my mind, for some reason, settles down during those times. Like if you were to take a, a thunderstorm and have it roll across. And, and for us, we have some pretty, pretty crazy thunderstorms here in Podunk. And a lot of them have tons of lightning, tons of thunder, and some thunder that will just almost shake the windows right out of the house. They hit so hard. And that's when I sleep the best. It's about the only time that I sleep is when a storm is going through, and, and I don't have any idea why I'd sleep better during a storm. You would think I would want to be out watching it. If I know that you know there's a, you know, a tornado watch or something like that that's close, then I'm up watching the skies, making sure that, okay, we're okay. But at night, if it's just a good old fashioned thunder boomer and it's and it's rolling through, oh, out I go. Under the blankets I go, turn the fans on high and turn on my classical music low so that way I can hear all the booming and the light and see the lightning and everything, out I go. Uh, for, so for to me, then I sleep better and I have no idea why. But, you know, I wanted, you know, some of the things that I was able to come up with now, I don't know if these are gonna match up um, with you guys, but one of them, uh, this is probably one of the first things that I thought of was probably because I come right out of a meeting and when I was thinking about these things and I'll make notes, you know, and I'll write them down quick. So then later I can come up with the notes that I use for the podcast. 
And I probably come up with this one because I would come right out of a meeting. And the first one is, is I, I, I have a tendency to shut down in loud and busy places. Um, there's, there's, it, it gets to be such an information overload that I just literally, it's almost like a short circuit. Um, and you just kind of, you just kind of hear the in your mind and, and you can just feel your body just twitching and you just kind of shut down. Um, there's been many times that, where I've been in meetings and I'll zone out and, and that's not a good thing because you're in a meeting you're supposed to be learning things or you're supposed to be sharing things or or, 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 or learning whatever whatever you're supposed to do in a meeting I don't know heck I zone out so much <laughs> I get lost in my head and I, I'm watching other things um, but I have a tendency to shut down in, in busy and, and really really loud places because all that external information and data that's coming into me it's just like okay this is just too much like I said it's like being out in the middle of the ocean and the waves crashing into you and your head is just barely treading water everything else is underneath the water and those and then those waves just keep crashing in your face and it's just like okay I can't this is just too much I can't do this so I have a tendency just to shut down um, when when I'm in loud and loud places and it's probably not the best thing to do but it, it's one of the ways that I've been able to find uh, to basically uh, It'll basically limit the information that's coming into my mind and into my head so I can filter through it a little bit more so sometimes when it gets to be too much I just I just end up just um, shut down uh, another thing that I and like I said I come out of a meeting when I wrote down a couple of these the first couple um, one thing that you know we introverts don't like confrontation we're not big on confrontation i'll be honest with you the vast majority i mean there's some that are i mean that which is fantastic means you're strong hey i'm all for it i'm okay but a lot of us will get stressed out when someone raises their voice at us and i found that i'm the same way but the problem is is i'm okay i'll start to actually that's when i shut down the most and that's kind of what led into the first one was when somebody starts raising their voice at me it's just like okay i'm done I, if you're gonna if you're gonna take that attitude with me um i'm just not gonna meet you on your level and i just end up just getting anxious and stressed out when you're when you're yelling at me is really what it comes down to and if you want me to you know be a better person or be there for you or help you or whatever you're going about this the wrong way uh, but I found that if they do it too much then what it does is I go kind of into a fight or flight mode and then the flight is gone and I go to fight at that point and then it doesn't matter what I say or what I do because basically you back me into a corner and then I come out fighting and uh, in the beginning and stuff there yeah I'll, I'll okay well you win i back off no problem whatever but if you keep coming at me and then then basically then i start to lash out and i will just boom i'll just eat you alive um and that could be just the extrovert characteristics on my side now i know there's extroverts that are, are are highly sensitive as well we're not all introverts that are highly sensitive i do know there's extroverts that are highly sensitive so a lot of these things can also work for them and I hope I hope it does help them but for me it's just when somebody raises their voice at me it's kind of like okay I'm uh, I'm gonna shut down now and I'm, I just refuse to um, basically I'm done but if you keep pushing and then then I'll lash out at you and, and here I come um, another thing that for me being that I'm, I'm an empath now now take into account introverts and extroverts we're not psychics um, so, but I, I think in some respects we can predict the future. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of funny, but there's many, many places. Remember, we can find patterns in things. We can find trends because we have all this information coming into our brains. We have a, a, a way of basically putting that chaos together. And you're going to start, you know, I mean, humans are very, very, we have our routines. That's just the way it is. So we can be, we are predictable. To a point i mean we can be unpredictable if we want to but for the most part most people are very predictable so you know it's not that we can say exactly what's going to happen with the future but what i'm saying is is there's many times that you know you get to and tell somebody okay this is what what's going to happen they don't make any changes and then all of a sudden down the road it could be as much as 10 minutes or it could be as much as 10 days and then all of a sudden it happens you, you just want to say hey i told you it's going to happen i told you so um so we can see, but that's because we can see patterns we can see variables we can we can kind of foresee the future 
And to me, that I, I can see that quite a bit. And that's probably why I excelled at management is because you can see patterns. You can see things happening. And, and, and I know, you know, we can't predict the future. Let's, let's be honest. I can't tell you what the lottery numbers are that are going to be for this upcoming weekend. It just doesn't work that way. But if you're highly sensitive like me, you know where I'm coming from. You can you can understand. And to be able to see the patterns and everything that are that are out there, things that are happening at work or things that are happening at home or at your little one's school or anything like that, we do pretty good at that because us introverts, we overthink everything. So that allows us to basically overthink all that information that's coming into our heads. And that allows us to, in some respects, predict, predict the future. And I know some people are going to laugh at me, and that's fine. But if, if you're like me, you'll understand um, where I'm coming from. And then another thing that I came up with that, that I get to think, and, and, and keep in mind, I haven't been, you know, I haven't had, I haven't been married in 13, 14 years. So some of these things I had to really work at to think about. <laughs> Um, and I don't have anybody else in my life, but this comes back to my family and friends is like I said before, I can feel if they're upset, if they're angry, if they're stressed, if they're overwhelmed. When, when you're highly sensitive and you're an empath, you can pick up on all of that stuff and you don't have to be in the same room as them, but you can feel something's wrong. Something's just not, not right. And if I'm closer to the people, then I can pretty much zone in who it is and what's going on. But Typically, when your significant other is stressed, you, your partner or anything there, you immediately pick up on it. And, and I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, hey, I can deal with the problem myself. I'm not, not going to bother anybody. But if you're somebody like us, you, you already know. We've already picked up on it. You can't hide that from us. You can't hide from an empath. That's just what it comes down to because we can feel, we can feel even when you're lying to us. You, you, your, your emotions change. Your body language changes. Your everything, your aura, everything changes about you. And we pick up on all of that stuff. And I know that sounds funny, and, but for us that are highly sensitive like this, it's not funny. This is exactly how we are and this is how we operate. And this is why it, we get to be um, so overwhelmed. And no matter when you have all that, and I've talked about, you know, the sound, the light and everything else. But another thing that I, that I thought about and, and my family looks at me and they go, I, I don't understand you, how you can be this way. Um, but I have a, an extreme, and this is, this is typical for sensitive people having a, an extreme sensitivity to smells, especially strong smells. Um, I can pick up on the, the slightest change in the smell in my house and it'll drive me absolutely crazy. Nobody else can smell it. They don't have the faintest idea because um, I, you know, I run air fresheners and stuff in the house. But even through that, I can still smell uh, what's going on because that is another way to get information. Str you know, for me, uh, there's no faster memory recall that I can think of than a smell. A smell will take you back instantly to a moment in time. And, and, and all those emotions come flooding back and all that, you know, and it's the same way with if you're walking through a, a business or, or home or whatever it is. Strong smells really, really bother me. I'm really, really super sensitive to them. Uh, perfumes will almost push me right off the edge. And even colognes, even, you know, some of the colognes that men wear, it gets to be too much. So, you know, smells can be just, whoo, okay, that gets to be you know just way way too much it's kind of like oh okay okay moving on i gotta go outside get some fresh air open the windows open the doors <laughs> whatever it is get some airflow through here so i had to be really really careful with the smells um uh, the uh, another one that i thought of and and this is true uh for me especially um uh, when when i fall in love i fall hard there's no there's no in between there's no <laughs> No happy medium, no nothing. I'm either not in love or I'm fully in love. And that is so dangerous. Um, it's so hard on me um, because I have to keep myself at bay and I have to keep myself away from people. Because once I, once I start having those feelings of love, then I fall hard. I'm all, I'm all in. There, I don't know how to just 50% a relationship or 75% a relationship. It's either nothing 
or 100%. There's no in between. And when I fall hard, you know, and then basically once I've fallen, then everything opens up. My chest opens up and I, I take my heart out and I give it to the person and say, here, please, please don't damage it. Please don't, you know, be mean to it. Don't stomp on it or anything like that there. But when you're highly sensitive, you fall hard. But one thing that helps us out a little bit there is if you ever fall in love with a highly sensitive introvert or a person, could be an extrovert, no, no doubt there, um, just know they're going to know things about you, they're going to feel things about you, and most likely it's probably going to be the deepest feeling of love you are ever going to know. Because we basically, we're sensitive, so if we feel that you're down or you're upset or sad or whatever, we're going to feel it and we want to basically jump over there and make you feel better. We want to fix the problem. We don't want you to feel that way because those feelings come on to us. But when you're in love and your partner is hurting, all you want to do is make them feel better. And, and, and I have to admit, when I fall in love, I'm all in. It's a bad thing for me. That's why I have to um, keep my distance from people because, I mean, I don't fall eas easily. I mean, it takes a while, but when I fall, I'm all in. I mean, it may take a while for me to get to that point, but oh, wow, once you're there. And, and highly sensitive people are that way because our emotions are so strong and so powerful that I have actually lost friends over how powerful my, you know, my feelings are because once I start talking to them about it, once I, it takes a while before I feel comfortable enough to talk to them about it. But once I start talking about it, I, I seem to overwhelm them. And it's like, nope, okay, I can't deal with this. And I've actually lost friends because of it. And I know that sounds funny, but unfortunately, I've lost a lot of good friends because it would be just because I have these feelings. And it's just like, I, I you wanted to know, I tell you about it, it's too much. Um, and it just, you end up losing people. It, it, it kind of breaks your heart, but it's like, okay, I don't know how else to do this. Uh, I, I, I was honest with you, but. In the end, it was kind of like, okay, well, it was too much. And I can understand. Our emotions, our feelings are very powerful and very overwhelming. We all of a sudden were, the same analogy that I use where, you know, everybody else's emotions, I'm out in the middle of the ocean and they're crashing and hitting in my face and I'm barely treading water. Well, it's the same way. If you were to take that person that you love, put them out in the ocean and barely have them tread water where the, the ocean is right at their throat, so all that water crashing, it's kind of the water crashing would be our emotions. So I can understand where it would be overwhelming. But as highly sensitive people like we are, we don't know any other way. We are, we are all in. I mean, it's just, it, it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to roll the dice. Oh, I'm in before the dice even quit rolling. Um, another thing that I found, which I really, really like, and, and I work hard to try to get, is... Um, uh, basically artwork I, I found because I was I was thinking about things that I like and why I'm so sensitive um, basically artwork for me uh, is great now it, it doesn't have to be the artwork that's hanging on the wall I, I know that's a popular misconception is that's the only thing that artwork is well no we have lots of amazing music out there we have we have all kinds of books like I said I write you know all kinds of books um, it could be just oh, nature. I mean, that's beauty. That's artwork because, you know, I mean, we have all these trees and right now we're heading into fall and all the trees are, are changing. That can be just overwhelming. You can, the, the simple babbling brook that's going by and you can hear it is artwork. I mean, it, it's amazing how you, how you can basically classify all of this beauty and artwork. I mean, beauty is beauty. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it's... <laughs> I love sitting out on a cliff and looking over where you can see miles and miles and miles of nature and it's it's incredible. So we get really, really deeply moved by beauty and art. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. It, it's incredible. Um, so that's just a, when you're highly sensitive, you take all that information in. So sometimes, you know, um, I also can be moved by food. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a sucker for food. Yes, I'm on my weight loss journey. No arguments there. But food can be like amazing. If you get into it with a good chef that can really, really cook. Or if you're lucky and have somebody like my son that, that is amazing on the grill or the griddle. Or, you know, all kinds of different flavors that, that you knew. And the taste and the textures and the smells. Food can really move you too. And I thought, okay, that would be a great one to talk about. Um, 
another another thing uh, to me for sensitive and I have to be really really careful is if I read a book and I mean I know I saw that by being you know with the artwork and stuff there but I, but I got to be honest sometimes when I'm reading a book I can really really get sucked in and, and I've got a couple of my favorite authors that, that I absolutely love their writing. And once I start sitting down and start reading their books, it's just like I just get in, enthralled into it. I just It's just like I'm all or nothing. And, and you got to go, because they, they write so brilliantly because they take your emotions up and down and up and down. And if you're high sensitive, it can be like, oh, wow, this is like, okay, I got to put the book down. This is kind of overwhelming. I'm starting to get seasick like I'm in a boat out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Uh, but to me, uh, you know, reading a good book, magazines or anything like that there can, can go a long ways to um, overwhelm you uh, because it, it's so incredible. They, they write so well. They, they invict, you know, so much emotion out of you, which is really, really cool. So I thought that was – that's probably why, like, when I write my books, um, there's times where I have to literally stop and I have to walk away from the computer – because it's so emotional. I'm going through where, you know, we're going through a high action scene or I go through a love scene or, you know, you bring up the past of somebody because you're writing their backstory and establishing that. And, and a lot of times I have that worked out, fleshed out and everything else there of what their backstory is. But even when I'm writing it, it, it gets to be so overwhelming that I literally have to walk away. And, and sometimes it might take me a day or two before I have enough control back on myself to sit back down at the computer and start writing again. So writing and reading for me can be just absolutely overwhelming, which I think is, is really cool because it's kind of like, oh, perfect, you know. Um, probably um, the last thing that I really could think of, and I, and I don't know if this is one that you guys do or if this is really going to fit in, um, everything... there. <laughs> To me, I, there's a reason why I do everything. I don't know how else to put it. I was trying. To, I have it written on my notes here, and it, that's not ex not how I wrote it. <laughs> uh, this is the only way that I can think of because it makes more sense to me. Uh, but there's a reason why I do every for everything is because I, I want it. For the most part, I want it to mean something. I want to when I go to work, I want to make sure that I do the absolute best job that I can because I want people to think highly of me. I tr I'm always on time early stay late whatever it is and stuff there um same way with you know any relationship i've been in is like i said when i fall in love i'm all in there's there's no deterring me at that point there's no there's no reason to talk to me anymore is i'm all in and for me that's kind of like the same thing is i i need that relationship to mean something uh, so I, I i go completely all in and i and i don't know how to do anything less so for to me, I, I need my work to mean something to me. I need my home life to mean something to me. And I don't know if that really makes any sense. But for to me, um, you can. OK, let me put it another way here. I just thought of this here. You could be let's just say you're a millionaire and you have all these toys. You have this big house. You have all these fancy cars. You have all these people, these servants and butlers and all these people waiting on you hand and fist doing everything for you all your cooking's done your laundry's done your cleaning's done blah 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 something i'll never have or nor do i want um but you can still feel really really alone and money doesn't doesn't buy everything yes it does make life easier no arguments there it would be nice to have a few extra bucks sitting in the bank account so things would be easier but you can be rich like that and have no meaning in your life whatsoever you just you, you just don't have anything to me some of the some of the happiest people that i've known and and, and me too are the ones that live the simple life they they don't need much to me i just want a little cabin in the hills and that's it I, i'm fine with that i i don't need a lot i don't want big fancy vehicles i don't want big fancy homes um, i don't need to live in a castle although i'd like to you know see a few castles but i don't want to live in a castle um, just anything simple and, and to me the smaller things in life like a little small cabin it means there's more love there's more home there's to me those are just more of what I'm looking for so to me getting the meaning out of all that there kind of helped I don't know if that means anything or if it makes any sense but it, I, when I wrote up the notes it made sense <laughs> 
So um, real quick here, because I'm watching, I'm gaining on time here. Um, but some of the things that I do to, when I get overloaded, overwhelmed, and start to short circuit, um, some of the things that maybe these will help you, I don't know. Um, I head to the hills to be among nature. Nature is very, very healing for me. It really, really helps me recharge my batteries and allows me to de-stress. Um, I listen to soft and comforting music, and then there's times that I'll blare the blare the music in the truck, and I'll sing along horribly. It's probably a good thing nobody can hear me. <laughs> um, one of the most difficult things for me to do is to say no to something or to somebody. Um, but there's there's just times where I just I, I try to say yes as much as I can, even when it comes at great cost to me or or whatever it is but on the rare occasion i try I, I do say no because it's just too much i'm just i'm maxed out i have nothing left to give uh, but i try not to i spend a lot of time alone recharging my batteries and taking off all that i have absorbed through the day and the week and everything else um spending i mean it's not just you know spending time alone is it's a necessity it's it's how i how i keep going so being alone up and driving around and stuff in the hills, being amongst the trees and not hearing anything helps me recharge my batteries. Um, I eat a healthy meal. Um, I'm eating healthier than whatever I have thanks to my weight loss journey. Um, that helps me uh, basically stop the overload when you have a good meal. I mean, a lot of us will eat a comfort food and trust me, I do have a couple of comfort foods that I can eat on my weight loss journey. Uh, but I found that that helps a little bit, allows me to slow down, you know, allow my mind to basically take a little bit of a break that's helped me here um, I'll spend time with my baby Willow um, we'll go for drives we'll go for walks we'll we'll play fetch she'll sit in my lap you know uh, just anything like that she really really helps you know de-stress me when I feel like I'm ready to short circuit um, I'll work on my books or try to do something creative um, I'll talk on my podcast that's creative because I, I love talking to you guys um, it helps me to de-stress and kind of not think about the world for a little while, even though I'm talking about it, but it allows my mind to slow down a little bit. Um, I do everything I can to keep my home free of negative energies and distractions. Um, this is my safe zone, my comfort zone, and I do everything I can to try to keep it that way, so that way I always have a safe place to come. And same way with my family and friends, that way they have a safe place to come to and allow themselves to basically you know, settle down, de-stress, and, and feel a little bit better. So um, all I can say is basically create a safe zone for you, which is which is normally your home, I'll be honest and stuff, uh, but you have to have a safe place to go to. Um, this will help you recharge and decompress. That's what I have found, um, being that I'm highly sensitive, it just, it just helps me to basically be able to get through another day. Um, and if you're super, super lucky, you have an introvert friend you can talk to, and you'd be surprised at how many times just sitting there quietly, just side by side and just spending time with them, how much that helps. And us introverts, we understand that. And it goes a long way. So, okay, that's it for this episode here. Uh, I think I'll end it here with the dad joke of the day. So, if you're ready to go and you've absorbed enough information, <laughs> it's time to make you laugh a little bit. Maybe make you groan a little bit. Let the eye rolls go. Who knows? But it's time for the dad joke of the day. So, if you're ready to go... Here it is. Do you know why you cannot tell a taco any secrets? Because they have the tendency to spill the beans. <laughs> I love that one. That was fantastic. Thanks so much for listening. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for always listening to my podcast. You've got this. Positive thoughts are going to help you get through the day. And as always, all my love and support, Sean.